Welcome to Option Trades today. I'm Tony the Bat Batista. July 13th, the day after my birthday, 2022. Let's take a look at what's going on in the market, and it's more of the same. What do I mean by that? Well, you've got even the S&Ps up a little over 20 handles, meaning the market is up. And you can see here over the last four or five days, the market has been doing exactly the same thing, going up around the same percentage point, meaning NASDAQ up around 150. It's up 150 now. Russell's up 10. And the Dow is actually up 40, but it's the weakest of the group. You can see here on the right-hand side or the, the right side of the left the the right side of the left hand gutter um, it's only up about 0.12 uh, percent of a percentage point and you've got the Nasdaq which is the strongest in the group up a full uh, one percentage point more of the same meaning over the last three or four days especially in the even S and P's and the Nasdaq the market's been going higher. What else has been doing exactly the same thing is volatility. Volatility has been going down, but I got a little bit of encouragement here. Made a low around 1535. Even the S&P's still trading near their highs. The Nasdaq, which has brought us to this to this lofty level, is still trading its highs. And volatility is catching a small little uptick here. Is it an alarm to sound that the market is uh, getting too uh, uh, frothy here? I don't really think so, but I am going to, since volatility is so low, look for a post-earnings trade in a stock that I don't usually trade, that would be Delta Airlines. Now, I did um, uh, talk about doing some post-earnings trades um, uh, as earnings are coming on. This is the very beginning of, of earnings. You can see Delta here uh, open significantly higher. I did not catch anywhere near the high. Matter of fact, I put my trade on when uh, Delta Airlines was up around 30 or 35 cents after Delta Airlines had traded all the way up to, it looks like a high of around uh, $49.80. So it missed the high by a lot. What did I do in Delta Airlines? Again, post earnings. You'll see a lot more post earnings trades coming on this podcast uh, because I like to avoid earnings. You can see here July 13th before the market opens, that little uh, at sign where it says uh, less than. Uh, is is showing you that it comes out in the morning. So it's in the morning uh, of July 13th, that's today. Um, I like to, the trade I'm going to look at is a diagonal spread. I haven't done many diagonal spreads on this podcast. So I think it's something that we can all learn from. So maybe some of the keys that I look for. I like my front month uh, to be in that 45-day time frame. Um, I'm not going to trade the weekly options. If you open up the weekly options with around uh, 43 days, you can see the markets are a little bit wide wider in here. Not that bad, but a little bit wider. I like to stay in the monthly options. Um, I could see if you wanted to go to August um, and, and, and maybe trade the weekly options. You will notice that the weekly options only have an implied volatility of 30. Now that's going to be paramount in what I'm going to be talking about right now in this diagonal. The August 18 options, uh, which are the regular uh, expiration, regular monthly expiration, they have a monthly implied volatility of 33. When I'm doing a diagonal spread, I want to sell a shorter dated option and buy a longer dated option. I'm going to be buying the September option and selling the August option. Uh, if you look here at the September option, the monthly implied volatility is 34. In August, August 18th options, it's 33. I don't want this relationship to be more than two percentage points. As a matter of fact, if I could have it my way, I would like these August options to be higher than the September options. My thinking is I'm selling a higher volatility option and buying a lower volatility option. If volatility contracts, that will help my trade. Now, that would be the reason why on top of having markets that might be a little bit wider, or maybe they are the same, I don't want to sell a lower implied volatility. That would be a four vol point differential, just about a four vol point, and that would be against my rules. Two points, two and a half points, that's about as, law, as, as wide as I want to go. So what am I doing? I'm going to do a little bit of a short delta trade in here. I, in August, I'm going to sell the 47 puts. Sell the 47 puts. We're just out of the money. And I'm going to buy a deeper in the money September put. I'm going to buy the September 52 and a half put. I was able to do this trade. Well, let's take a look where I was able to do this trade. If you go right here to these little lines and go down to the follow page, 
You don't have to sort by uh, Bob the Trader, but you can. Or you can see all the other traders that have made trades here today. But you could look here that I did this trade a few moments ago, and I did it for $3.69. You can see here that I'm looking at a trade that's post earnings. Uh, which short delta, a short delta diagonal. Let's look at the trade now that I've showed you where I put it on and where you can see it even before this podcast comes on or even before you're watching this video on YouTube or on our uh, Tasty Live website. Let me give you a little bit of background on here. There's about 70 some odd cents in premium in these 52 and a half puts that I'm buying. So I want to sell an option in August that has more than that 75, 77, 78 cent um, premium that I'm paying so that I can have a positive theta decay trade. You'll look here in August that put is trading for around $1.35, around $1.34, which gives me a positive theta decay trade. You'll notice there's no pop on this trade, meaning no probability of profit on this trade. Again, my son and a lot of the other um, uh, traders on here will go into the um, uh, analyze tab and move the volatilities and you can get yourself a probably a profit on this trade. Um, but you can't know what volatility is going to do in the future. So this is a very, uh, since there's no pop on this trade, you would think, and it is a very vol sensitive trade plus a directional bias. You'll notice here on one contract it almost has 39 short deltas. If you've been watching my podcast for any period of time, this is probably one of the heaviest um, delta trades I've done. Not because, I got a lot of delta here, delta airline and delta that I'm talking about. Not because I'm overly bearish on delta airlines, it's just the nature of of the strategy that we're using, which also has, and I think for the smaller traders that might be listening, has defined risk. Whatever I'm paying for this diagonal is my risk. Now I paid $3.68 or $3.69, so this is a small winner right now. What's my max profit on this trade? Well, this trade could go to the width of these strikes. I mean, if the stock goes down to uh, 47, which is certainly within the expected move of $3 uh, in August, that's in the parentheses here, $2.94. But if it goes down to 37 at expiration, that 37 put would be worth zero. The 52 and a half put would be worth, well, at least five and a half dollars, right? So the difference between the strikes, four and a half to five and a half dollars, there'll be some premium of in that option. So I paid 360, it could go to five dollars and beyond. I could also, in September, after August goes to expiration or 21 days are, have gone, I could buy back my August option and possibly sell a September option. If I'm still, um, uh, bearish on Delta Airlines, I could buy back this August 47 put and maybe sell the 46 put or for the, sell the 47 put and keep this long put spread on if I so uh, felt that uh, Delta Airlines was still a little bit bearish. What? I, why am I a little bit bearish in Delta Airlines? Well, it came out with earnings. Everything's been said and done. The stock's been parabolic. I'm going to use a defined risk trade. It uses $390. Let's just call it a little bit better than a 50-50 shot because it has a positive theta decay with defined risk. Only using $390 in buying power. If they paid $390 for it, I paid $368 as I showed you here on the follow page. And you can see all of my updated trades um, on the follow page here. You'll notice in Microsoft, Microsoft was higher today, um, giving me some fits. I'm rolling up some of my puts. Again, you see that immediately done at 841. I push these trades through um, as I make the trades. Um, you can see here in KRE also uh, uh, give me some, some fits. I also did a rolling up of a call spread here. I'm sorry, of a put spread in KRE. And then I closed uh, my SPX trade yesterday, taking a little bit uh, of 50% profit on that trade from my podcast on 7.6. Listen, everybody, I appreciate your time here. I love uh, all your feedback. Please, on YouTube, like and subscribe 
to option trades today. If you're listening on YouTube, leave me a little comment down there. I love to find trades that help you. I hope you find this uh, beneficiary or hope you find this beneficial um, to your trading. Something that will help us here and benefit us and you because you'll be able to use the number one brokerage firm in the galaxy is to move your account, take your account, open up another account at tastytrade.com and take advantage of all of the perks that they have there.